The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. And the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning long before dawn, he got up and left the house, and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they had found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere, to the neighboring country towns, so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. What do we do when we fall sick? Well, I suppose it depends on the nature of our illness or our infirmity, if you want to call it that way. So it can be as simple as just self-medication or we go and see a doctor. But very often, we know that, like this even for me, eh, people tell me, go and see a doctor, I say, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, I'll, I'll self-medicate, I'll self-medicate. You know, so the thing about us is this, we, we, we seem to think, or we seem to think that we know what to do with ourselves when we are sick. And if we don't, these days it's very easy. Just take out your phone or whatever, then just go to, Dr. Google and ask the same question. How do I this? How do I this? And you'll find many people actually doing this. Instead of going to get proper um, help or proper consultation from someone who knows, we choose to do it ourselves. But sometimes the result can be detrimental because we do not know exactly what our conditions are. The out outer conditions may seem to be that way but we don't know what's going on inside that causes the thing. Because sometimes we are just curing the, the symptoms, but we're not treating the root cause of whatever we are suffering from. And so, when you talk about seeking treatment, we know what to do. But if we talk about on the spiritual sense, how do we know that we are spiritually sick? or spiritually uh, incapable of doing things. Because sometimes we, we, we look after our bodies more than we look after our own souls. But we are all integrated. As human beings, we are made out of body, mind, and soul. What happens to the soul affects the body. What affects the body affects the mind, and so on. So all three are interconnected. Sometimes, it is not because uh, the root cause may be something else, not physical, but maybe spiritual or emotional, and, and it comes out in the physical form. And sometimes because we are physically suffering, it affects our emotional health and spiritual health. If, for instance, if we are sick, it, it's very hard to pray. We cannot focus, we cannot concentrate. And sometimes if we are really sick, anything people say will just tick us off, we will just blow up like a volcano. I think most of us would experience this. People say some, this one little thing, seemingly innocent, that's it. Everything blow up. So we, we know what we are going through. We know the rut or the consequences, but sometimes we don't know the root cause. And um, so sometimes you have to be careful how we treat ourselves. Now the gospel today talks about Jesus curing those who are sick and cutting out devils. Now the sick, of course, they know they are sick. 
But you see, the thing is this. Jesus is not a doctor. He doesn't have a medical degree. He cannot take the telescope and just check our temperature, take the thermometer and check what the fever like. He, he, he can't. He's not qualified. And yet, he's able to cure them. So, it is not, sometimes it's not about just physical healing. But people come to him, perhaps they know he's a holy man, they know he's the son of God, but most come to them because they just need relief from their pain. And for most of us, this is what we seek throughout our life. When we encounter pain, sorrow, difficulties, trial, we want to relieve all those, and we want to be free from all those. But we know that in life, this is impossible, because every single day is a challenge for us, every single day is a trial for us. It is up to us how we face it. During the time of Jesus, they had Jesus, so he could cure them. But we don't have Jesus now. We have people going to pilgrimages to loot some. Now, don't get me wrong. Eh? I have nothing against pilgrimages. I have nothing against all these um, you know, places where people go, loot and Fatima and whatnot. I have nothing against them. Okay? But people go everywhere to find relief. And in loot, especially, where people go and try to dip themselves in the spring, hoping to be cured. But how many people are actually cured? Not many. Physical cure, anyway. I have uh, one fellow, uh, fellow priest who brought his mother there, hoping that the waters will cure his mother. But, and him as well. I mean, he also had some issues. But nothing happened. But later, in hindsight, he told me that going through the pool did not, may not have cured them physically, but it cured them emotionally and spiritually. It helped them to accept their situation as it is and to rely on God to provide what they need, not what they want. And this is exactly the, 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 the thing that always plagues us. We have a lot of wants. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. But we don't have a lot of needs. In the case of the gospel, Jesus knows their needs. People bring the sick there. He never say, okay, what's your condition? Have you got fever? Have you got sore throat? Nothing. He doesn't have any of these questions. All he does is just cure it. So he knows our needs. And um, which is why sometimes when we pray, what do we actually pray for? Do we pray for what we want or we pray for what we need? After curing the sick and cutting out devil, Jesus rested, then went off to a lonely place and prayed. Why does he need to pray? He's the son of God. Why do you need to pray? But because of his humanity, he also needed to commune with the Father, to maintain that relationship, to give him that strength to go on healing people. And so, knowing, getting the love of the Father and passing on to the people, that's how he knows our needs. If a father or a mother knows the needs of the children without them asking, so much more God knows what we need. So, when we pray, it is good to ask for what we need rather than what we want. And to just let God say, okay, this is what you need, I'll give it to you. Instead of just asking for so many things which we don't get and we get bitter and we get disappointed and we just become angry. But it may not be the right thing to ask for. And so, in our daily living, let us continue to seek God in everything, to not, to not so much look at the end result, but to look at our journey, our journey with God. Where is my journey with God now? What is my relationship with God? And as Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be given to you. Not in the way that we want, but in the way that God knows our needs. And finally, just one more point. Jesus heals us in many ways. We too should become agents of healing for others. We cannot heal them spiritually or you know, physically, if you are a doctor perhaps. But what we can do is heal them emotionally. When we forgive someone, that's where healing takes place. When we lend our ears to someone, when we learn, 
lend our shoulder to someone to cry on, to listen to. That's how we become agents of healing. Very often we forget that because the personal touch is gone. Um, so we pray also for the grace to become agents of healing, to lend our time, our energy, so that people can also depend on us to be healed.